if you're a doctor, nurse, paramedic, or any other allied healthcare professional, and if you're looking after a patient who may have the COVID-19 coronavirus or any other respiratory tract infection of potential severity similar to those, you might end up needing this or this or any other aspect of personal protective equipment. Now, we know you know what you're doing. We're not here to tell you how to do your job, but in the next four and a half minutes, our infection prevention and control nurse specialist, Jean Legaspi, and I would like to run through a few steps to show you the quickest and safest way to don and doff your PPE. Now, if this is useful, share this with anyone you think this can help. Now, this is strictly for medical professionals, but on this channel, we have patient information and clinician information. If you like it, you might wish to consider subscribing. I hope this is useful for you. Now, like any important procedure, the first and foremost is good hand hygiene. Starting with lots of alcohol gel, at least four or five squirts. Rubbing the palms and the backs of the hands, then the thumbs, and then in between the fingers and the web spaces, followed by fingertips in the palms, and then the wrists. Next, the gown. It usually opens at the back or the side there should be a fastener at the top behind the neck. The cuffs should have elasticated sleeves ensuring a nice snug fit. Once the attachment is fastened at the back you can then move over to the side or the rear where you should find some tabs or velcro. If you have tags like this it might be useful to tie a bow to make it easier for you to untie when you're doffing. When putting on the mask it's worth making sure that the straps are hanging underneath your hand. That way, when you pull them over your head, they don't get tangled with your hand or the other strap. Lower strap first, then the upper strap. That way they don't tangle with each other or your hair. Press around the nasal bridge to make sure that the metal strap inside the mask fastens around your nose. Then check to see for air leaks. Now notice what Jean is doing here, she pushes the mask over to the left-hand side. She's making sure that the mask is central on her nose, thereby minimizing leaks near the tear trough, which is the most likely area for leaks. She then puts her hands around her face, blowing in and out vigorously to check for leaks. We can see here that the mask has achieved a nice, tight, snug fit, and you can even see the skin being pushed back a little bit because of the tightness. She's confirming a good fit here. Next step with the visor, pulling the strap back with the dominant hand, the non-dominant hand guiding the visor onto the forehead and adjusting to make sure your visual fields are not obscured. Next, gloves, like always, nothing special. Apart from the cuffs, they're particularly long and they're designed to overlap the cuffs of the gown to prevent any exposure of skin minimizing the chances of infection, of course. These nitrile gloves are pretty tough. Once you've got your fingers halfway in, you can pull back just from the cuff itself, and usually they won't tear. And that's it. She's done and ready for battle. Doffing starts with the gloves, pulling from the middle of the palm with the non-dominant hand and then using the non-dominant hand to tuck in underneath the other glove, preventing contact with the outside of the glove. Because of course, that's where contamination is most likely to be found. And that's why Jean is performing more hand sanitization. Now, we know regular use of alcohol gel can lead to contact dermatitis, eczema, and other conditions. So we'll put a link in the video for another video on how to protect your hands whilst maintaining sufficient hand hygiene. Next, the gown, removing from the back first. Notice how Jean touches the inside of the gown. This is where the bow comes in handy to make it easy to unfasten. Of course, if you're particularly inclined, you can do that step whilst your gloves are still on. Notice how Jean only touches the inside of the gown. She rolls it forwards and turns it inside out, never touching the outside surface of the gown. Then pulling her hands free and disposing without touching the outside of the gown. 
obviously to minimize infection. With the visor, pulling from the back, she leans forward but then tucks her head in to avoid any contact between the face and the visor. Same with the mask, pulling from the back, leaning forward and then tucking her head in, leaning forwards and disposing. That's it.